Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back from the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm wearing my Macho Man shirt. It's time to talk about some pro wrestling tonight. What well, was a, well, red wine and pizza? All gone, though. Friday, as always, and you know what that means? It's time. It was time for some SmackDown. I'll tell you what. It almost didn't disappoint. SmackDown has that weird bookend effect. The beginning's good. The end is good. The middle is a pile of mess. But again, before I start off, Paul Hernandez. Most intriguing comment. You, sir. I've earned that six count. Let's get right to the show with SmackDown. We start off with Roman Reigns. How he beat down his cousin Jey Uso. And Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, he declares him the tribal chief of all of WWE. But Roman Reigns does not want to hear any of that. No, no, no. Nope, I just want Jey Uso to declare me tribal chief. Um, Jey comes out, Jey Uso comes out. Now, this is going to be a continuation. This will be a pretty good Hell in the Cell. I think this is one of those few times where WWE did the whole family versus family thing kind of right. Even though it started off weird, it's it's building and, and it's going to culminate at Hell in a Cell, which I hope for my sake is later on in the month. Because, man, there's a lot of wrestling on this this recently, especially on the weekends. Um, tomorrow, there's a quick little thing. Tomorrow, El Vagabundo is going to be doing the Impact show for me. Um, I will be doing what I can do of the AC Takeover show. And then Monday's kind of a normal week. I need to write that down on my schedule. NXT. No, I did. There we go. Oh, good to go. I say, Jay Uso comes out. Then AJ Styles says, man, you don't deserve anything. Big brawl begins. And this leads us to our opening match. This was interesting. It was good. 
it was different. They're using these wrestlers in different ways. They're putting different wrestlers together to see what mix. This actually mix. It's that old idea of, of throwing it in the of throwing everything in the pot and see what happens. This was something good. Um, AJ Styles just starts off. He beats up Jey Uso. After Jey Uso beating him up before they went to commercial break, they come back. Ding, ding, ding. Ring the bell. Match officially starts. AJ goes right after Jey Uso. AJ. AJ. Simone headbutt. Right to the hurt ribs of Jay Styles. We're going to see more of those ribs. The FPOS rib tape comes out, trust me. AJ Smart into sidestep and lets Jay Uso cream into the corner. Um, AJ then gets a flurry of strikes. There was no Styles Clash, though. Again, if they're going to build up Jay Uso, they're building up Jay Uso the right way. They're having him sell the right way to the right person. AJ Styles is definitely a high caliber wrestler. And Jay Uso was kind of selling to that effect. But then AJ Styles, then the consummate professional, reciprocated that with his interactions with Jay Uso. Um, they go to the outside because he sends AJ up and over the table. Uso tried to do, do, do that splash. Again, took a little too long. Now it's a Pele kick. AJ suplexed him from the apron. On, onto the table because AJ was on the floor. That was a really good spot. Again, not a spot we feel a lot. So whenever you have that new spot, that new thing, it adds to the enjoyment of the show. They're just not rehashing old things. Oh, they're just doing this or doing that. He's saying this is something new and original. Good stuff. Uh, let's see here. And we come back, AJ ducked a super kick, the Pele kick on to Jay Styles instead. Um, Jay eventually does hit a dive after he sends AJ Styles off one more time. AJ did not get off the phenomenal form. Instead, he gets met with a kick and that kind of weird kneeling super. Uh, when uh, AJ was kneeling, he got nailed with a super kick. Jay goes up for the big splash. Jay Uso won. He won, but it, it, he. He worked his way into the win. It wasn't a squash match. It wasn't the, a dominant. It wasn't a dominant performance. It was just right for Jey Uso. I'll tell you what. Jey Uso picking up this win and having to face his cousin um, down the road. They'll probably continue this a few more times. I want to say it's going to be the 20... I think it's the 25th. I might be wrong, though. But that's okay. Um, again, this was, I thought it was good. Great opening match. Hot match. Uh, they let it breathe. I think it lasted like a good 15 minutes at least. It was a good surf and turf match. This is where the bookend comes in. Because then it gets sloppy. Or uh, not so fun. Uh, Sammy then cuts a promo. He throws the one belt in the trash. Even though they're identical. Whatever. And then we have John Morrison versus Otis Mash. The, the, why are they burying Johnny Mundo? Jeez, he was so good. Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, John Morrison. They're just burying him. Uh, comes off Morrison. Uh, he did a duck under, got out with Otis, got out of the ring. Smart, using his speed, but then once... Otis hit like a clubbing blow and then just stands on his chest. Uh, hit a couple high elbows off the ropes. Did a little corner splash. Then it was Caterpillar Vader Bomb. That was it. That's almost exactly the way the match went. Otis wins. He has, he's representing himself in court, which. He was in court. Probably the only way to do it, but this match, I'll tell you what, was a ham sandwich. It just made Otis look strong and Johnny Mundo look pathetic. So again, it highlighted a little bit of the speed of John Morrison, the strength of Otis. That was a little, that was about it. It was, for the most part, a glorified squash match. 
Because the next match was just a, a repeated squash match. And I can't believe the WWE is going back to this well because they've done this way too often. It, they had Sheamus versus Shorty G. Uh, uh, Shorty G starts out by a roll up, the bridging German suplex, with, which looked great. And literally, like, like I blanked it like a piece of pizza, and like there were like two bro kicks. Match is over. Um, yeah, Sheamus wins. This was a can of soup. Uh, Big E cuts a promo. I guess. He and Sheamus are going to have a street fight. They're going to fight all the way to the Magic Kingdom. Big E, you obviously don't know where the Magic Kingdom is. Actually, pretty far away from the center of Orlando. I think the Magic Kingdom, I think Disney's actually like a good, I mean like highway speed's a good 20 minutes away from Orlando. Like literally it's in the middle of, it's, it's, I know it's in Orlando. It's literally in Kissimmee. And it's like, Near the middle of nowhere. It's again. You're not gonna fight the way into the Magic Kingdom unless they start at the monorail. Only way that happens. Then we have the Kevin Owens show. He's gonna interview Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss looks absolutely brainwashed. She has that like creepy hot to her now. Um, eventually the Fiend's music plays. And Kao eats a mandible claw. Uh, the Fiend takes the hand of Alexa Bliss, who I guess is his sister Abigail. Um, the weird thing about this is, I guess there's no more Kevin Owens versus Aleister Black. They cut that feud short, and that was terrible because, again, Tommy Ends versus Kevin Steen, if they prolonged it and did the right stuff to it, would have been amazing. But they didn't, though. Then we have um, the next one. Actually, you got, yeah, so that was okay. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro and Baron Corbin take on two members of the Lucha House Party and Matt Matt Riddle. Um, we have so we have uh, not Cle so we have Grand Metal League and Lince Dorado saying they're going to get Lucha lit with Matt Riddle. Well, wow, that's not good. It starts off on uh, Lince and Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke strikes Lince. He does his flying stuff. Kalisto shows up late. Kalisto needs to be a member of the Lucha Cartel with Santo Escobar, DJZ, and Raul Mendoza. That's where Kalisto belongs. He really doesn't look like, because he comes out with a suit. He looks amazing, his mask. He looks like he's a member of the, of the Lucha Cartel. He really should be there. This Lucha House Party is probably holding him back. We'll see what happens at Hell in the Cell. If he has, like... Who kind of extreme lucha match? We'll see, but he finally catches up. Um, and then this match was also quick. I don't even think Cesaro got in there at all, or if he did, it was like quickly between breaks. Grand Malik, I don't think he got in. He got in there for a little bit again. Not really that good of a match. Uh, Riddell he goes right after Corbin. Um, Shinsuke eats a stunner. from I think Grand Metal League and they eliminate each other. Cesaro's on the outside with Lindsay is so in the ring and Barry Corbin. And there was a whole Kalisto miscue. It was it was weird. The, this match had no flow to it. Uh, Matt Riddell eventually hit the bro Derek on to Baron. Corbin. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then uh, Sasha Banks comes out, cuts a promo, says she's going to take the belt off of Bailey, takes off her neck brace. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that'll probably be another hell. I, I figure if that's going to be next week. Or if they're going to do something weird where they prolong it to Hell in a Cell. Because, again, these kind of grudge matches, it feels like it deserves to be in a Hell in a Cell. And then Carmella gets repackaged. Yeah. Um, Carmella looks like a 50-year-old Florida MILF. 
she looks like one of those blonde-haired Florida women who spent way too much in the sun. The sun will destroy your skin very quickly. She looked like she aged like 20 years. Her tits look fake. She looks fake. Not a good look. And that's as much as I can say about that. Then that leads us to the Sami Zayn versus Jeff Hardy match. This is pretty good. Sami Zayn comes comes out there in his jacket and his and his quasi military gear. And oh wow, did my camera ever freeze up? But that's okay. It's on par for the way this week has probably went. So he comes out with his f uh, fat piece of shit rib tape, which by the way does. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you, you tape up your ribs, it doesn't matter. But taping up your ribs probably hurts more than not taping them. Uh, so Jeff Hardy doesn't come out there. Jeff Hardy had amazing face paint, though. I don't know who does his face paint. I, I swear he had contacts in it, and then he, then he opens his eyes, and you're like, whoa, those are not his eyes. But whoever does his face paint really is amazing. Uh, they tie up to go right into the corner. Sami Zayn removed the turnbuckle. Sami Zayn pulled a Yano. Yano is so great. Everyone's doing Yano stuff now. People are really dig Yano and his antics. No one's done it for so long, and now all of a sudden everyone's doing it. Jeez, I hope Yano doesn't retire soon. This is all like a tribute to him. That would be bad. That made me feel sad, actually. But, um, so they tie up to go in the corner. Jeff does a shoulder tackle, and, and like, Sammy did, was going to do a leapfrog. Jeff, Jeff just stood up, and, and it looks like he just, like, ran right into him. Like, he forgot to duck or something. Uh, the announcer sold it really good. Again, it looked, looked kind of weird. It's like, huh, did he just not duck? But that's okay. It looked like a headbutt to the, they sold it as a headbutt to the ribs. At least it looked like that. And going after the, the injured, FPOS rib tape of Sami Zayn. Uh, parts of his rib tape actually comes out. Uh, he goes then out of the ring. Um, Sami drives Jeff into the corner. Then there was a Sami Zayn did a standing elbow from the top. That looked impressive because you don't see Sami Zayn go to the top rope much. Jeff turned around with a superplex. Then he had his little flurry. The uh, double leg drop to the groin. After a couple of kicks to get in the basement. And then finally followed up with a basement drop kick. It's always good to see there. Sami Zayn had a blue thunder bomb. And then with the exposed turnbuckle. Um, a couple times they kind of fake they kind of fake each other out going into it. Jeff hits a swan time, But no, Sami got the knees up. And Jeff like fell right, right on the back of his head. I don't care what you say. Just, just diving and like hitting the back of your head on someone's knees can't be fun. Uh, Jeff tries to climb the rope, but this is the rope that Sami Zayn pulled the, the turnbuckle pad off. It would have been a true Yano if he would have used the turnbuckle pad and then went for the freaking uppercut low blow, just like Yano. But uh, that's going to make infringement. So with this, Jeff Hardy goes to the top rope. Jeff Hardy yanks him down. Jeff Hardy's head hits the turnbuckle. Out like a light goes Jeff Hardy. Sami Zayn picks up the pin, the win. I'll tell you what. This was actually this is a bookend match. This was another surf and turf match. And that was smacked on it. Actually went by fairly quick once you got by the filler part of the middle section. Because both the the again the opening match, the ending match was amazing. Everything else was, uh, you kind of could have done without. But still, overall, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a cheeseburger of a show. It's not bad. Well, that being said, that was SmackDown. Um, again, tomorrow, Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo 
numero uno will be here. He'll be doing the live stream. He shall be doing the live stream for a victory road. I just need some time off. I'll be back Sunday for NXT 31. And that's going to be weird because that's going to be kind of short. That'll probably be over by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. They always start early. And they always end early. I think there's like five matches. If you do the math, it tends to last about two and a half hours. So, yeah. So, the time between 9, 30, 10 o'clock, it'll be over. And it goes back to the normal schedule. So, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Remember, folks, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And, well, you'll see Yo del Hobo El Vagabundo Numero Cuatro Cinco, I guess, tomorrow. And I'll be back Sunday. Bye.